Okay, welcome back to the next video. Uh, this is going to cover lesson six or tutorial six. Uh, so, uh, tutorial six, we are going to take a look at uh, how to create this out of a solid. Um, the first one we used it out to, or we did it out of two D two dimensional geometry. For some reason, I have trouble saying that. Um, but now we're going to create a solid with this, and we're going to use the revolve command, which uh, I don't believe you've used up until now. We've only used extrude in the mill. So we're going to use the revolve, and we're also going to do some edits to this because, lo and behold, engineering had some changes they need to make. Um, happens all the time, so we're going to help them, and we're going to make the changes to this part. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I want to do and I need to do is I'm going to create a line to revolve around. I need an axis to revolve the part around. So that's what I'm doing there. And that's just going to be basically the z-axis. It's a line that I've created along the z-axis. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is go to my levels and I'm going to name my geometry level. And I'm also going to create a new level and call it solid. Okay, so now everything that I create, anytime this check mark, whatever this check mark is on, that's your active level. Anything I create from this point forward will be put on whatever level is active. Um, so I'm going to make sure that solid is active because I want the solid to go into the solid level. Uh, let's go to solids and let's go ahead and create that. And I'm just going to select solid, check, and axis, and there we go. So it has created our solid. Uh, now, we need to make some changes to this. One of the things we need to do is we need to get rid of this radial uh, groove here. We need to also get rid of this chamfer and put a radius or a small fillet on there. And we also need to put a groove in here, an internal groove. And lastly, we need to change this diameter. So uh, there's a couple ways we can do this. The First, we're going to start with this internal groove that we need to put in there. Um, let me view. So if I put translucency on that, that way you can see both inside and outside. So I need to get a groove in here. Um, I cannot do that by using my model prep, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, basically, I can't make that adjustment directly to the solid. I actually have to change the 2D geometry that the solid is derived from. So to do that, I'm going to turn my solid off. And I'm going to make edits to this geometry. So I'm just going to create a rectangle here. And the book tells us it's 0.1 by... Point one. Um, I have to kind of look through the book here because it doesn't have a drawing that I can use with the edits on it. So I'm just going to trim this up and there we go. There is our change. Okay, so now if I go back, I need to regenerate this solid because I made a change to the geometry that was defining it. So I'm going to hit regen and all went well, so there should be no problem. Um, if there was an issue, I probably would have got some sort of alarm or this would have stayed a question mark. So it looks like everything went well. Uh, to double check that, I'm just going to turn my solid on. And you can see right there, I have my groove in there. So that's perfect. All right, next, I am going to get rid of this radius. Now to do that, first I'm going to turn off my geometry level. I'm going to work on solids only, and I'm going to go to my model prep. My model prep allows me to modify the solid directly. Uh, much easier, much less tedious to, uh, to edit. But, of course, it's limited in its power. Now, to do that, before I do any edits to that, I have to remove all the history of this model. So I'm going to hit end selection, and then nothing happened here, but stuff happened in the background. It deleted some history of some changes and things like that. Uh, so now we can start doing stuff with our model prep features. And uh, if, if you do this and some funky stuff happens, or if it just doesn't want to cooperate with you, you probably forgot to hit remove history. So make sure you hit that. 
All right, let's go to modify feature, and I am going to remove this face. I'm just going to click it and hit enter. And there we go. So it's as simple as that, getting rid of that. The other one I want to remove is this one. And I'm going to hit remove, check, and there we go. And it's gone. Um, so we've removed both features that we wanted. Now we need to add a radius to this corner. Uh, so I'm going to use my push-pull feature. Now when I select this, if I want to put a radius on a corner, I need to make sure I select the edge and not a face like that face or even this here surface. Uh, so I'm going to make sure I select my edge and then I get a little arrow here and this allows me to push pull. If I click on this, I can drag this thing in and out and, and give myself as big of a radius as I want. Um, but the way I like to do this, I always like to type everything in. So I can also type a number in, 0 0.0625, enter, enter, and there we go, that is edited. Next, I need to change the diameter of this. I'm just gonna do the same thing, select that, and this one needs to be a half inch uh, hole. So I am going to make it a 0.25 radius because it's asking for a radius enter and check and there we go and that is it so that is finished um, the last thing I need to do is I need to simplify this notice I have a couple faces where I don't need a couple faces so I'm just gonna simplify this solid and basically I'm gonna what I want to do is quit the whole thing hold on I didn't get it There we go. Now I got the whole model. So I like to get make sure I select the whole model and hit check. And it looks like it was two faces were removed and you can see that is gone now. Okay. So from this point I am going to save this. Um, remember always save as you go. So I'm going to hit save as uh, tutorial 6 and Hit check, tutorial six, and save. And yes, I want to replace that one. Okay. Oh, boy, it's really slowly drawing that in there. So this just goes to uh, show that I do not have a lot of computing power with the current laptop that I'm using. I'm very limited. Let's see if, okay, there we go. I'm gonna change this translucency view because I believe that takes a little bit more memory. I'm also going to get rid of, uh, nah, that's good for now. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is create some tool paths. Now I can either create these tool paths from scratch or I can import them from my previously uh, made file, in this case, tutorial five. To do that, I'm just going to right click in my Toolpaths Manager and I'm going to hit Import. Up here, I need to go find file my Tutorial 5 file. So I'm going to hit and select that and I'm going to go to the location of that file. 5. Now, nothing in here. Well, that's because I don't have the proper file type selected. So I need to have educational files. And there's my tutorial five. And you can see there it brought all of the ones that I've used in that one. And I'm gonna hit the plus, it imported them, and then I'm gonna X out of there. Okay, so now all I need to do for these files is I just, or sorry, these tool paths, I just need to add the geometry. I need to tell it what it's cutting. Uh, so for this first one, the face, I'm just gonna hit geometry. I'm gonna select the front of the part. And I'm going to drag this box. It gives you this funny box. This is kind of supposed to box uh, what you're facing away. If you take it this way in the Z, it doesn't really matter because it only sees what stock's there anyway. But you want to go a little bit above the stock diameter. So I'm going to go a little bit above in the diameter and just click check. And I'm going to regenerate that. Okay, and that looks good. All right. Uh, so let's go through these and add the geometry to them. So we're going to add geometry for this one. We're going to add a chain. 
Uh, I need to go to solids and it's going to give me this nice view when I click the solid and hit check, check, okay and the next one is going to be my finish and I'm going to add a chain and I'm going to click here and here again. I don't have a last button so I can't use that one. Um, then I have another lathe finish. I believe this one was actually used for my groove that I had in there. Uh, so I don't need that one. Remember I had that radial groove so I don't need that so I'm just going to delete that one out of there. So we're going to get rid of that. And it's important, make sure you only have that one selected. If you have other, other ones selected, it'll delete them all. So be careful about that. All right, so we got rid of that one. Um, lathe drill. So let's take a look. We're going to use a half-inch spot drill. Uh, sure, why not? We'll spot drill this. And let's just go to parameters. And let's make sure that 150 is good. Drill point. I'm just going to select the center of the part. Zero, zero, check. I should update that one. I'll tell you what, let's update these. Let's regen these while we have them. And let's just hit regen. Okay, so they've all regen. We got the X out of those. So let's continue on. Uh, the drill, uh, this is taking a half inch drill. I believe now the tutorial is having us tap this a half inch 13, if I'm not mistaken. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change this drill, first and foremost, and I believe it's a 2764, um, if I'm not mistaken, select tool from library, and let's go to our drills, L drills, and where is our 2764, it's right there, okay. And we'll leave tip comp one and breakthrough on. That way it breaks the whole way through the part. Okay. Actually, let's change the breakthrough amount to 0.25. That'll give us a little extra room for our tap. All right, and then we'll hit, well, yeah, we'll hit check. We can drill all that at once. We don't need to peck that. All right, so let's regen that. Okay, let me just check that again. Yeah, all right, we're in good shape there. Okay, and let's look at the lathe rough. That is going to be the inside of our bore. So let's go ahead and change that geometry and hit add chain. And we're just going to select from there to there. Check, check. And let's regenerate that. Oh, look at that. We're colliding somewhere. Ah, right here is where we're colliding. So we have a little bit too big of a boring bar for that. Um, now, I believe your tutorial actually has you drill that out a little bit with a bigger drill. So let's do that. Let's insert another drill path in here right after this one. And let's go to turning and drill. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it has you use a three quarter inch drill. There it is. Okay. And let's take that to the depth of right there. So 0.45. And I'm gonna take tip compensation off for this one. And hit check. All right, and now let's see if our rough pass will work after that. I'm gonna bring this back down to the bottom. Let's regenerate that. There we go. So now our rough pass is working. All right. Um, no, sorry, I didn't regenerate it. There we go, now it's working. Okay, so there it shows our rough, that looks good. Um, our finish pass, let's create that one as well. Add chain, check. Check, okay, and then last but not least, let's create our cutoff. Now, for our cutoff, we need to pick something out here, and we don't have that option uh, with a cutoff, so we need to activate our 2D geometry for this. So I'm going to go back to 2D, 
and I'm going to go to tool paths and of course I am going to hit geometry and just select my boundary point there all right and I'm going to regenerate everything here and there we go uh, looks like for the most part I have a good part there uh, let's see if we can s hopefully we can uh, simulate this All right, that looks good. And just note, the reason we don't see our line there is because our 2D geometry still has that radial groove in it. Okay, all right, let's continue on. So we have a little bit more to do. We have to add an internal groove in here. Um, and we also have to tap this thing. So first, let's add the groove because I want this to be as rigid as possible before I tap it. Um, also, my cutoff, I need to add this stuff before my cutoff, right? So let's make sure I'm in front of my cutoff. Okay, it'd be really weird to cut that off without, uh, without doing the, uh, the groove first. In fact, it would be impossible. So we'll, uh, we'll insert that over here. And let's do our groove. So for that, we are actually going to pick our groove, even though it's internal. And I'm going to chain this. So I'm going to hit check, and I'm just going to chain right there, and I'm going to select a tool from library, and then I'm going to need to go and grab my lathe inch tools. Okay, and this is only a hundred thousandths wide groove, so I need something smaller. In this case, I have a width of 62 thousandths. So that should do the job. It is an ID grooving tool. All right. Now, let's take a look at this tool before we, actually, let's run it. Tell you what, let's run it, and I'll show you what the problem with this tool is. And I only know this because I've, I've obviously used these grooving tools before. Um, everything in here is good. Let's do a 0 .01 overlap, and our lead-ins, we're going to make them straight, of course. So hit check, and there we go. Okay, it made our groove. Now let's let's simulate this. All right, so it's showing what we've already done. Now take a look at that bar. When that goes in, that's going to blow this whole wall out, as you can see. So this bar is a problem. We need to alter that. So let's go in and change that grooving tool, and let's look at the holder. And you can see here, it's basically saying that the shank of the tool is square or rectangular and the cross section is a half inch, so it's square. We want to make it round. And we're just going to make, just click the round button and we're going to go ahead and hit check. And we're going to regenerate that and let's run that again. And of course, I'm only selecting this one. I don't want to run everything. All right, so you can see there, now it's showing that insert is crazy large. Um, we can alter that insert as well, and we can go ahead and do that. I'll actually show you how to do that. But uh, essentially, this fixed the problem. Uh, basically, it was just uh, you know the, the tool that we were using. So let's go in here and change this insert. Um, this insert is 0.625 wide. Um, it's a quarter inch long, so... Let's make this 0.125 long. And all of this stuff looks okay. Let's go to the holder. And yeah, this should be insert thickness 0.2, whatever. Let's make that 0.125 as well. All right, and let's regenerate that. And let's run it again. So it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Uh, and we could change that thickness down on that insert a little bit more. Um, we could also have it not protruding quite as much. So we can edit that however we really want. We could also put a little bit of clearance on there. But for the sake of this simulation, that should work just fine. Because we're never going to find a tool that actually looks like that. Um, they're all made to cut, obviously. Okay, so there we go. We've got our groove. That looks good. 
Um, last thing we need to do is we need to tap this hole. So let's go ahead and go to our drill. And let's go and get a tap from a new library. We need to go to our taps library. Uh, leave taps. And let's see here. We need a half inch 13. I think that might actually be down here. Half inch. That's half inch. Half inch 13 right handed tap. Okay. Um, remember, we need to have the correct feeds and speeds in here. I'm going to make this at 500 inches a minute, or 500, sorry, 500 RPM. And then our feed rate is just going to be 1, or actually it's going to be 1 divided by 13 and 76 thousandths, or 77 thousandths per revolution is going to be our feed rate. All right, our depth, we're just going to select the back of this thing. And of course, I'm going to have. Um, so if I use drill tip compensation, uh, there's really no tip angle on this, so it'll be kind of funky. So I'm just going to change the depth, and I'm just going to make it go a little bit past. I'm going to make it go to point um, negative one point four two five, just so I get the threads the whole way through. And I'm going to hit check. Uh, you can see this is not a bottoming tap either just by the look of it. Uh, so if I go in and I look at this, I could also change that feature as well. I could make this a zero. And um, where is my taper at? Number of flutes, four, helix angle, threads per inch. Uh, it's gonna be a bottoming, so we're gonna hit that. Check, yes, all right. Let's take a look now. Ah, see there? Now we got threads the whole way to the bottom. Okay, so let's take a look and see how our whole part looks. Oops, accidentally didn't select everything. All right, there we go. All right, so let's watch this run start to finish. All right, and there we have our finished part. Looks pretty good. You can see the graphics are a little rough on this. Uh, the reason for that is I'm using solids. Uh, as I mentioned, my computer does not have the greatest computing power. So whenever I'm doing anything in solids, it takes a little bit more and uh, it runs a little slow or it's the quality of the graphics are a little low. So I'm gonna save this again. Uh, so I have it. And um, I believe that is about it for this lesson. Uh, so if uh, you have any questions, obviously feel free to email me. Um, or, of course, the best way is always to come see me during my office hours or in class. Uh, you can see here, one thing that I'm going to do before I, before I let you go is the way we post code, just click the little G1 button up there, check. It will ask us to save it and it will post out some code for us. Now you won't be able to do this on your home learning edition because you don't have a SIM. I do have a SIM on my laptop here and you can see it gives me the code. And you can actually see the code that it's posting out for each operation. Okay. Uh, once again, yes, if uh, that's it. And if you have any questions, again, find me, email me. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Anything I can add to make these better, of course, let me know. I'm always happy to hear feedback.